Yeah, can you hear me now? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Right, well, thank you so much for doing this. Fine. Um, I'll get, get into the first question. So, yeah. uh, can you share your background and how you first got interested in art? Um, well, I think when I was a child, I was really good at drawing. Just, I loved drawing. My dad always drew, and it was just something I was always good at. I was the kid in the class who could draw, I think. There was other kids in the class who could draw, but I felt comfortable. I felt comfortable with pictures and really crap at words. So I didn't feel comfortable reading. I think I was slightly dyslexic, but I found pictures comforting and stories comforting. And I think when I got older, I realized that my brain was more um, straightforward. I found images straightforward and I found words a struggle. Mm -hmm. So I just naturally drifted towards art and kept there, stayed in my lane, as they say. <laughs> okay. So many creative people, isn't it? Um, you know. I know. I'm just I know. Or pictures make more sense. Yeah, yeah. I think I didn't realise till I, I started teaching when I was 23. And I think I realised then that I learnt better through images. I liked pictures with stories in. Like I, I looked at images to, to see what was going on in the world. And I hadn't realised that. And it was like a penny dropping which was dead exciting. And it was good as a teacher, because then you could look at the way different people learnt, because people learn in different ways. I think the brain operates in different ways. And then I started reading about that, and it, it made me a little bit more confident to be, because uh, you always, I think, in the 1960s and 70s, I think the kids who did art were... <laughs> were the ones who weren't academic um, and I was definitely in that bracket I wasn't academic but then I found, found as I got older I started to read because of art and learn and I became quite academic I wouldn't say I am academic but you know, I, I became more comfortable with it does that make any sense at all <laughs> yeah, that's great thanks and um... What subject matter do you focus on in your work and why do you choose it? Right, I think for the last 10 years, the subject matter has been the relationship between humans and animals is like a core theme. Um, I try and use things in my life to build stories around and symbols in my life, like everyday things and then try and build narratives around those things. It sort of broadens out from there. I'm starting to introduce in some of my new series of work, um, things like migration, uh, migration of animals, migration of humans. I'm sort of forming links, links between how animals and humans cooperate and live together and then building stories. It doesn't always work, but it's, it's a theme, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely see some of those themes in your in your newer work. So, like the last child in the woods and yes, migration yeah. and the butterflies and, and humans as well. I think there's sort of layers. Uh, I quite like making an interesting image to start with, and then the stories within that, like little things that people wouldn't know or I know or if like there'll be little lots of little stories like in the notes I've given you about that there's little things that trigger me when I'm creating the painting because the paintings tend to take months to develop because sometimes I get stuck and I'll just put them to one side work on another painting and then I'll sort of think how to resolve something within a painting and it'll take us and then I'll go back to it and try and have another go and, and build a story or, or, or just leave it for a while 
sometimes years. I'll go up here and say uh, that I've left for years and that I will. A, a good example is uh, the pig, the little pig, Scratch and Sniff. Yeah. That, was it. that was in the studio for six or seven years, unresolved. And then I just resolved it for the exhibition. I don't know, I, I just woke up one morning and thought, oh, I'll just do that. I'll just make a joke. That's what I'll, do. I'll just have a bit of fun. Often it is, oh, I quite like to use humour as a, a, a win sometimes. Um, and uh, as part of the story, I'll use humour to, to sort of, so people who are not used to looking at art, which is most of the people I know in life, mm -hmm. they're confused by art and they think, oh, like I don't understand. So a little bit of gentle humour often draws them in and they realise they can understand. Uh, and it's, there's no big secret. Um, it's just, it's just a, it's just a picture really. That there leads me nicely into the next question. That is, what is the process of starting a painting like for you? Oh, well, I, I normally have around anything from six, seven to 10 to 15 paintings started at once. Oh my God, really? And I'll, yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll, some will float to the surface and some will get left and I'll rework later. Um, but I, I, I quite like the paintings to talk to each other. So an idea I might start in one painting might work and I'll have to re go into another painting to, to see if it works on that one. <laughs> and there's a lot of painting over and a lot of trial and error and, and doing something. I usually work on a painting for a week and then I'll work on another painting for a week and then another painting and I'll rotate them round. And as after I've got a month into a painting, some will come to the surface and get, get more near completion. And I might just try and complete that painting. Uh, others I might just leave. Um, I've got plenty of paintings I just leave. <laughs> uh, but I quite like them to have a theme and to feed off each other and to have like conversations with each other. So the paintings all sort of be thematic um, and uh, depend on what I'm reading at the time, what's on the news, what, what just what, what music I'm listening to, it'll be, it's an eclectic sort of shambles really. It's a, it's a brain shambles. And I write everything down in a sketch part, which is just scattered notes. Um, and I try and sort of assemble them in the paintings. Mm, I like the sound of what you're saying about the paintings speaking to each other. So if you're working on a few paintings at the same time, would they usually form part of the same series? Yes, yes, yes. I, I think I'll normally work on a series for three or four years. I think the one, the series I'm presently doing, which is about migration and um, global warming, amongst other things. I'll basically throw in anything that's on my mind. Um, I think I think this will continue for quite a few years. I've got quite a few ideas and I want to expand out into all sorts of different things. So I'm expecting to work on this series for four, five, six, seven, ten, till I die. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> till the world ends. <laughs> Which is pretty close, I guess. <laughs> Happy thought. <laughs> um, would you mind giving me a look at your studio space? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've basically turned paintings round. There's paintings here from years. So I've just made it look like there's lots of paintings here. And most, mostly when I'm working here, the paintings are turned round. So it looks quite cosy. I normally have a few paint the paintings that I'm working on um, visible, but um, I'll 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 show you around. Um, I'll take you. Uh, there's. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
There's my desk. And there are my pins and my brushes and my solvents. And the look all clear? Yeah, that's great. Well, it's lovely to see the workspace. I love um, seeing people's videos. And... I have tidied it up so it looks, <laughs> so I don't look like an absolute total scumbag. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. I, I normally, I mean, I live in here, really. This is the biggest room. I live in a little cottage. This is the biggest room. And this is where I spend 99% of my time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> um, the next thing that I wanted to ask you is, what would you say is an integral part to the work of an artist? Right, um, I think communication. I think, um, well, I can only speak for myself, but I think you reflect back the world you see around you, the world you experience. And you. Tr I, I think an artist tries to order that and then represent it back. So you act as a filter. I think uh, an artist, fundamentally is a communicator, communicates the world they experience. So I see my job as just filtering, filtering all the rubbish out and trying to put together stories that matter, that matter to me, trying to find universal truths in, from my life um, and sort of represent them back. And it's quite hard. <laughs> Did that make any sense? Oh, you're like an artist and a painter and you're making these images, but you're also like um, investigating the topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I like to read. I like to know what's going on in the world. And I think uh, in the studio, I try and filter that and try and make sense of it, I guess making sense of the world, making sense of my world, uh, and where I, who I am in the world. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's communication as well. It's having the ability, because most people, I think everybody, unless you're a famous politician or something, you haven't got a voice in the world. I think as an artist, you sort of have got a voice, however small that is. Are you think you've got a voice <laughs> and, I th and I think it's trying to use that wisely um, and try and be who you are, Tr try and be authentic I guess, be, be true to yourself. God, I'm getting heavy now. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, do you have a favourite work that you've made? Yes, uh, uh, when, hmm, yeah, I think the painting that I realised, the painting I did that I realised I was onto something, was a painting called Waiting for Doggo. Well, you have to send me a picture. I'll send you a picture of Waiting for Doggo. It, um, it was basically a play on a Samuel Beckett's Waiting for God -o. but it was a dog <laughs> with a halo. Um, and it was a whippet, and I, I was basically starting to use the symbolism of, of a northern person, like a whippet being a northern working class, called a working class horse, really, because people used to bet on whippet racing, like, uh, like people down south bet on horses, or people in Ireland bet on horses. Like the whippet was the northeast horse or clusters the northeast horse and clusters a working class animal uh, and that what I did in that painting was the first painting I placed an animal in place of a human and placed it in a human predicament or in, and in an artistic context I think uh, anyway and I really liked that painting it was like a, a click moment it was the one where I thought hmm that was a, that, that worked, or I felt it worked. So I think that was, I'll send you a picture of 
Great. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. And um, can you share what you're working on at the moment or any other future plans? Yeah, I'm. These are the paintings I'm I basically have on the go at the moment. Um, they're not completed. Can you say that? Yeah. And these are all incomplete and sort of started. Um, and they're just being developed. Uh, they're part of the same series that's of some in the gallery. Um, and I have others. I've got some big ones, but they're in the other room. The um, big seascapes. I'm, uh, I'm starting to put um, displace animals in boats and biospheres in boats, like trees in boats and gardens in boats. Um, in pardon? Boats in bathtubs, like the one in. <laughs> yeah, I quite like my, my dad went to sea. My dad was a uh, marine engineer, and all my family on his side went to sea. So I've got a sort of strong affinity with the sea because I probably should have gone to sea, but I didn't. I ended up doing this. Um, and I quite like, uh, one of my favourite paintings is, or one of my favourite painters as a child, is a painter called Clarkson Stanfield. He's a Sunderland painter. He was around when Turner was around and he painted seascapes. And when I was a child, I used to love the paintings in Sunderland Museum and Art Gallery. And they still have a big effect on me. Uh, beautiful paintings and I wanted to sort of play around with some of those images that initially influenced us when I was a child um, and just have a bit of fun with them so I'm using quite a lot of his compositions um, to sort of play with <laughs> anyway and, and some of them are just thoughts at the moment um, because I wanted uh, in some of the paintings I've got the sea coming into domestic settings, like uh, northern living rooms. And I wanted to go outside into the sea uh, and see what that was like, because I've never done it before. And I thought it would be interesting and good fun. So um, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm doing there. Really. And are they the same series as the ones in the gallery um, on the beach? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to sort of create Gav world. You know where all there's a world like there's a seascape, there's a landscape, there's an interior, exterior. So I'm trying to develop my world, my world view, <laughs> world domination. <laughs> you know, I, I, I always, I'm, in the past, I've always stuck to like interiors, um, and I thought it's about time to get outside. What with COVID and all that sick of being inside <laughs> so just really clear with something different yeah oh that's great thank you 